Hey guys, it's Laura here again. Welcome to another video and let's get into it. Kara Walker is an American contemporary painter, silhouettist, printmaker, installation artist, filmmaker and professor who explores race, gender, sexuality, violence and identity in her work. She is best known for her room-sized tableau of black cut paper silhouettes. Walker is regarded as among the most prominent and acclaimed black American artists working today. But why is this so? Kara Elizabeth Walker, born on November 26, 1969 in Stockton, California. Walker's father, Larry, was an acclaimed artist whose work explored socio-political themes. He and his friend, the artist Betty Saar, were among a group created an empowered message of hope and optimism for America's black communities. The influence he had upon his young daughter was profound. As she remembered back, one of my earliest memories involved sitting on my dad's lap in his studio in the garage of our house and watching him draw. I remember thinking, I want to do that too. And I pretty much decided then and there at age two and a half or three that I was an artist just like dad. Years later, Walker's father would be one of her greatest defenders when she faced harsh criticism. He argued his generation of black artists had fought for freedom of speech and self-expression. When she was 13, they moved to Atlanta, where her father took on a position as a professor at Georgia State University. The family settled in Stone Mountain. In contrast with California's multicultural environment, the Walkers were one of only a few black families living in Stone Mountain and racism was still rife here during this time. They later discovered the town still organised Ku Klux Klan rallies while Walker faced racist bullying at school, forcing her into the position of outsider. Retreating to the library as an escape, Walker read about Southern American history, educating herself on the new oppressive environment she was immersed in. Walker received her BFA from the Atlanta College of Art in 1991 and her MFA from the Rhode Island School of Design in 1994. Walker found herself uncomfortable and afraid to address race within her art during her early college years. However, she found her voice on this topic while attending Rhode Island School of Design for her masters, where she began introducing race into her art. She had a distinct worry that having race as the nucleus of her content would be received as typical or obvious. In the early 1990s, Walker started showing her work in Providence, Rhode Island at the age of 24. The same year she presented her breakout piece, Gone, an historical romance of a civil war as it occurred between the dusky thighs of a young negress and her heart, 1994, at the Drawing Centre in New York City. This war installation inaugurated the artist's signature medium, black cutout silhouettes of caricatures of antebellum figures arranged on a white wall, uncanny, sexual and violent scenarios. In reviving the 18th century cut paper silhouette to critique historical narratives of slavery and the ongoing perpetuation of ethnic stereotypes, Walker has transformed the craft into a new type of epic history painting. In the work's elaborate title, Gone, refers to Margaret Mitchell's 1936 novel, Gone with the Wind, set during the American Civil War. While Walker's narrative begins and ends with coupled figures, the chain of cinematic turbulent imagery refutes the promise of romance and confounds conventional attributions of power and oppression. That work and subsequent others, such as series of watercolours titled Negress Notes, Brown Follies, 1996-1997, caused a stir. Some African-American artists, particularly those who participated in the civil rights movement, deplored her use of racist caricatures. Walker made it clear that her intent as an artist was not to create pleasing images or to raise questions with easy answers. She also explained her use of the silhouette by stating that the silhouette says a lot with very little information, but that's also what the stereotype does. In 1997, at the age of 27, Walker received a John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant. Her work was exhibited in galleries and museums worldwide, and she served as the US representative to the 2002 Sao Paulo Biennale. 
She was on the faculty of the School of Arts at Columbia University in New York City. In 2006, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City featured her exhibition titled After the Deluge, which was inspired in part by the devastation wrecked the previous year by the Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. More recently, Walker has expanded beyond the realms of cut paper silhouettes, exploring films such as Testimony Narrative of a Negress, Burdened by Good Intentions, 2004, in which flat silhouettes became moving puppets lit from behind. Walker creates a strong central female character here, as if reacting with strength against her critics' writing. In testimony, the negress has the power. Another point of departure came in her colossal public art sculpture, A Subtly or the Marvelous Sugar Baby, 2014, a 35 tall sugar coated female sphinx who has, as writer Roberta Smith describes, undeniably black features and wearing an Aunt Jemima kerchief and earrings. Situated in the former Domino Sugar Factory in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, the work raises awareness to the sugar trade's dirty, complicated history, a trade only made possible through slave labour. Walker made it through the initial barriers of criticism to a place of international recognition, Featuring in Time Magazine's list of 100 Most Influential Americans and holding a retrospective at the Whitney Museum in 2008 while only in her 30s. In 2019, at Tate Modern's Turbine Hall, Walker installed a four-tiered fountain, Fons Americanus, which served as a subversive monument to the transatlantic slave trade. Fons Americana stood 13 metres tall in the centre of Tate's Turbine Hall in 2019, echoing demonstrations to take down monuments that celebrate colonial histories. Inspired by the Queen Victoria Memorial Fountain in front of Buckingham Palace, Walker's sculpture reflects America's history of racial terror and lynchings. The pedestals of the central piece of Fons Americanus are ringed by ambiguous figures like a hangman, a slave trader, or an Afro-Caribbean priestess. Britain's colonial connections to the slave trade are reflected in the very name of the building that housed Walker's work. Henry Tate, part owner of the sugar company Tate and Lowell, founded and provided paintings for the first Tate Gallery at the end of the 19th century. Tate released a statement about this on its website. While it is important to emphasise that Henry Tate was not a slave owner or slave trader, it is not possible to separate the Tate galleries from the history of colonial slavery, from which, in part, they derive their existence. Walker combines purience with humour and condemnation in a way that makes her characters complex and often contradictory figures to read. Drawing from an art historical and literary sources, Walker creates and deconstructs scenarios that expose biases and prejudices, exploring the power struggles underlying personal and political relationships. Her work proposes alternative mythologies and new ways of engaging with traumatic historical material. Walker uses historical decorative styles, including the silhouette to create complex and sophisticated narratives, emphasising and undermining the ways in which images and narratives can be subject to stereotyping. Though Walker herself is still in mid-career, her illustrious example has emboldened a generation of slightly younger artists. Wangachi Mutu Gehinde Wiley, Hank Willis Thomas and Clifford Owens are among the most successful to investigate the persistence and complexity of racial stereotyping. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked learning about this amazing artist's life. If there's any other artist or designer's life you want to learn more about, please leave it down in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe and put your notifications on so that you can be notified for when I next post. See you in the next one. Bye.